KCRT, the voice of Central Jersey. From politics to entertainment, from social issues to lifestyles, from newsmakers to pop culture. If it's Jersey, it's on Jersey Central with Burt Barron, 732-545-9282. Or toll free at 888-545-9282. It's 837 on Jersey Central, Tuesday morning on the new talk radio WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey. Our need to know things coming up a little bit later on in this 830 half hour including the list of some of the most overrated jobs. And uh, you can probably guess what one of them is, which is why I'm even going to talk about that. But we'll do that in just a bit. Uh, joining me now on the Raritan Bay Medical Center, Jersey Newsmaker Hotline, good friend and a uh, longtime uh, guest on WCTC. We've had him on a bunch of times over the years to celebrate an absolutely terrific book uh, that he wrote a couple years ago called The Boss Always Sits in the Back. He is a New Jersey native. Uh, now residing out west in New Mexico. And he's my guest on the Raritan Bay Medical Center Jersey Newsmaker Hotline. Uh, he is our good friend, Mr. John D'Amour. John, welcome back to WCTC. We miss you in New Jersey, my friend. Thank you, and I miss New Jersey. How are you, Bert? Good to talk to you again, sir. And uh, big th- things uh, big things happening with the book uh, nowadays you want to talk about? All of a sudden, uh, yeah. A, a, a few months ago, the, the uh, you know, the, when you put a book out now, you just don't put a book out. You uh, you need to uh, have an e-book, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's an entirely different process than just getting a book printed and putting it out. But the guy who runs, uh, the guy who runs my e-book uh, department, <laughs> he came to me and he said, you know, that, uh, that version that you put out about a year ago, a year and a half or so ago, that is the memoir version of the book as opposed to the original version, which, as you know, Bert, was called a novel based on a true story. Right. And so we put that out about a year and a half ago, and oddly enough, uh, it was selling, and it was selling very good as an e-book. So uh, he came to me and he said, you know, maybe you should think about putting it out as the memoir. Now, uh, I thought about that for quite a while, and... uh, I decided about, uh, I'd say maybe two months ago, to make it happen. And so we uh, we had uh, a lot. Well, I shouldn't say a lot because it's actually a very limited printing. Uh, but we had uh, about 1,000 books printed. And uh, the book, uh, The Boss Always Sits in the Back, the memoir, is ready to come out on October 1st. And I'm really very happy that this is the very first radio show I'm going to I'm doing to announce this because you have been one of the best supporters of the boss always sits in the back since the day this book came out. Well, thank you. I, I believe in you, John, and I believe in the story. And uh, what do you think brought about the recent interest? I mean, why all of a sudden the spike in interest in the story? Uh, well, as uh, as I've probably said more times than I care to remember. Uh, America, and especially New Jersey, but America has a uh, a romantic fascination with all things mafia. They just love it. They refuse to let it go. Uh, and fortunately, the boss is a true story told through the eyes of a uh, a young man who grew up in New Jersey in that family. And uh, the fact that the that the book right now is 100% true. That's uh, why it's a memoir now. And the last version was a novel. Uh, in order to uh, break through, I guess uh, that was the easy way to do it. And now that I proved myself, uh, agents and publishers uh, and book retailers are willing to deal with us now uh, because it's a memoir. Excellent. And the, the, the book has had so much success uh, in Jersey. There's even some bookshops, uh, John, where you still hold the sales record uh, of this book. It, it sold more copies in a bunch of shops across Jersey than any other title they've ever carried, which is very impressive. It outsold Fifty Shades of Grey. And that what does that tell great, you, right? Right. <laughs> that's the greatest accomplishment that, uh, that uh, I, I have. Yes, uh, it has. It has done that. And I actually... Uh, just want to let people know that I'm very happy to announce that there's a brand new bookstore in Hoboken, New Jersey. I know that's not in your uh, direct uh, uh, radio show uh, uh, power, 
uh, up in Hoboken, but I know that they're listening online right now. Uh, there's a new bookstore up in Hoboken, New Jersey, called Little City Books. It's 100 Bloomfield Avenue, uh, and they just started carrying the books, and I signed uh, a bunch of copies and sent them there. So they're selling signed copies of the book. Very good. Hey, that's terrific, and uh, you're still moving books here in Jersey. That's uh, That's fantastic news, my man. Good to hear about that. The story that refuses to die, which I'm very, very grateful for, and I'm um, actually right now in the process. As you said, I, uh, I did live in Los Angeles for many, many years, about 13, 14 years, and then came here to New Mexico. Uh, I guess I just got tired of having too much fun in L.A. and uh, uh, came here about a year ago, but I'm in the process of trying to put together uh, – somewhat of a small tour for uh, Southern and Northern uh, California uh, in a month or two. So I'll call you along that way, too. If you remember, it was about a year ago right now that I was driving across the desert on the... Yes, you were on your way to uh, to Las Vegas uh, for an event, right? Did we lose John? Let's try to get John back. Maybe we lost uh, his uh, phone call, the uh, connection there. But it's always good to hear from John D. Amore. And uh, the book, again, called The Boss Always Sits in the Back. And now it's being published as The Boss Always Sits in the Back, The Memoir, which is uh, a pretty cool thing, too, and kind of gives the book uh, an additional life. Uh, Mike, can you just check on the phone, make sure that, uh, that John is okay? And uh, we'll uh, we'll get him back on. But, uh, again, the, the terrific story, and we were one of the first stations to kind of get behind John when the book came out, and it just kind of took off uh, remarkably. But uh, let's see if we have uh, we have John. You vanished there for a second, pal. You okay? Yeah, everything's fine. All here. right. Uh, this is uh, what life is like living out in the New Mexican desert. Sometimes oh. you have phone service, sometimes you don't. Yeah, the luxurious uh, phone service. Yeah, but you were talking about your uh, you were driving through the desert to Vegas the last time about a year ago. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like the first week of October, actually, and uh, I did MobCon 2014, and that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I had been invited to be part of that by the promoters. And, uh, you know, it was, it was amazing to be up there on uh, on stage with uh, one of the guys who was actually portrayed in the movie Casino. If you're certainly uh, people in New Jersey know who Frankie Vincent is, well, the character that Frankie Vincent played in Casino with Joe Pesci was Joe Pesci's right-hand man. Uh, I've become good friends with the real-life character, uh, whose name is Frank Collada, a wonderful guy. And uh, so you're on stage with all of these uh, former, I guess you could say, mobsters. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then on one side and on the other side of me, I had FBI guys, Nevada State Police, uh, <laughs> Vegas policemen, all who wrote books about uh, the pretty much the same subject I did, uh, the same group of Italian guys that sort of came from... Uh, East of the Mississippi. Very cool. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, that guy Frankie that you know was a pretty good baseball player, if you remember the final scene of Casino. He was uh, pretty good with a baseball bat, right? You had me sitting here for a second going, baseball? I don't remember him ever talking about And then I remembered the final scene. Yeah, he uh, he did uh, handle a bat quite well. Man, I still cringe when I watch the last scene of that movie, man. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Absolutely. It does the same to me. Yeah, but so, well, but uh, again, continued success uh, on the book, John. Uh, is there somebody, a uh, uh, Facebook, website, where can people go to, uh, to perhaps buy a book or get some more info on, on the book? Well, like I said, you can go to that book. Specifically, the people in Jersey, you can go to Little City Books at 100 Bloomfield Avenue in Hoboken. Or if you would like a, uh, and not to take business away from any uh, uh, bookstore, but if uh, for your readers, I'm sorry, for your listeners, Bert, you know I'll do this. Uh, if, if any of your people write to me at John at, I'm sorry, and John is J-O-N. There's no H in John. So it's J-O-N at the boss always sits in the back. And if they let me uh, know that they heard about the book through your show, I'll make sure a very special present goes in that envelope. Wow. Well, very nice. Thank you for that. I'm going to put that up on our Facebook page, and uh, we'll get the, some people to write to you and get their free book, my friend. I appreciate that. 
Thank you. And yes, uh, th- there is a the boss always sits in the back Facebook page. If anybody wants to go there, you can check out the synopsis of the story, and you could and you could see that every day I post a picture of somebody around the world with a copy of their book, and I'd love to have your listeners do that, too. Thank you. I love that. And always, John, thank you, and uh, we can't wait to see you back in Jersey again sometime soon, but uh, thanks for the time this morning, and uh, continued success, sir, and I sincerely mean that. Thank you, and I'll keep you and your audience abreast of everything that happens. You know, the the next thing that we're looking for is, of course, uh, a producer to come out of the woodwork and uh, and make a movie out of there it. There you that go. That would be a fantastic There thing. you go. And I'm sure it's going to happen soon, and it will be just a huge success, I'm sure. John Diamore, thanks for your time this morning, sir. Thank you, Bert. Have a great day, and everybody in your audience, have a great day. I miss New Jersey. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, John Diamore, my guest uh, here on Jersey 